You did well. You pronounced it well. Hi, everybody. You know, I'll, uh, I will try to be a little bit self-critical. And I say I will try, and whether I will be successful, you will say afterwards. Usually, um, it was said by Maya that we tend to name the culture uh, topics as projects. And we also usually talk about what others do about culture in the company. And we as HRs are just leading it. What I'm going to tell you today about is how we, the HR team, went through an integration project. That was a project. And how we actually lived in the beginning, how we started it, and what changed and how we became self-critical, but let me start with it. First of all, let me tell you who we are. I'm sure that there are some people in this room that know about Mobiltel, but still, very briefly. Mobiltel is the first uh, uh, mobile operator in Bulgaria, having more than 20 years of experience already on the market. Since 2010, we are through a number of merges and acquisitions of fixed operators, so we are now a full telco provider. We have more than 4,200 people now. We have more than 4 million and 200,000 customers in Bulgaria. And we have almost 40% of market share. A lot of force, it's easy to remember. We are also part of Telecom Austria Group, actually one of the eight operating companies part of the, of the group. But maybe what is more important is that we are part of America Mobile. So when you look at the screen, the Telecom Austria group is just, uh, a, uh, you can uh, see it through the magnifying glass only. And uh, the blue part, not the elephant, but still a blue part, that's America Mobile. And for those of you who do not know what is America Mobile, it's the number four operator in the world. And it's actually owned by the richest man in the world, Carlos Slim. But maybe we can talk about it later. These are the number of services that we provide to our residential customers, and I'm definitely not going through that because I'm not a salesperson, although it's, it's very often coming up to selling ideas to, uh, to my people. And this is what we provide to the business customers. Basically, we do all for our customers. So we have a full scope of portfolio of fixed and mobile services, and we bundle them very well. But before I proceed with our project, I would like to uh, start with a short video just to awaken uh, those of you who have not yet had their second cup of coffee. So this is how I would like to tell you more about my company. Because you will all agree, I'm sure, that it's always one thing when I'm talking to you about the uh, market share and the number of customers and the product portfolio. But it's definitely another thing to have a look inside. So let's have a look inside. Какво мислят родителите ти за твоята работа? Какво мисли половинката ти за твоята работа? Какво мислят децата ти за твоята работа? Какво мислят приятелите ти за твоята работа? Какво мислят клиентите ти за твоята работа? Каква е реалността? 
удобна работна атмосфера и множество допълнителни придобивки. Различни хора, професии и дейности. Интересна и динамична работа, която ти позволява да се развиваш. Креативни колеги, които те предизвикват да даваш най-доброто от себе си и ти помагат и в най-трудните ситуации. Екип, който знае как да работи и как да се забавлява. И вече 20 години осигурява комуникацията на повече от 4 милиона клиенти в България. Навсякъде и по всяко време. Искаш ли кариера с бъдеще? Стани част от екипа на Entel. How do you like it? <laughs> Thank you. What I think about working at Mtel, it's everything except of the part with the customers because we don't have this, you know, the red phones anymore. Um, okay, let's go now to the next part. Last year in October, it was officially announced that uh, Mobiltel is uh, acquiring Blizu Media and Broadband. It's a company that is really uh, well known on our market as a TV service provider, an internet provider. And what was the aim of uh, this uh, acquisition was to first and foremost grow, because that's part of our group strategy as well. So we want to, oops, somebody's pushing. So what, what we wanted is to grow, to grow the fixed business in terms of TV services and in terms of internet. So by acquiring Blizu, what we achieved is actually our aim. And that was to be the largest uh, company on Bulgarian market providing uh, internet services in terms of customers and the second largest providing TV services to customers. So this was really a wow. That's part of the strategy, but how we execute it. You know this famous quote that uh, uh, execution is eating uh, strategy for breakfast. So let me share with you now how we started executing it. And again, this is just the HR point of view. So to start with the guiding principles. First and foremost, what we wanted to make sure, and that is why it's the first guiding principle, is that we didn't want for our Blizu colleagues or colleagues to be, to think about us as acquiring them, meaning like being the big fish, you know, swallowing the small one. So from day one, what we started talking about was never about acquisition. It was always about merging, always like one plus one is more than two. So that was our guiding principle number one. Then we, of course, said that there is a clearly even playground. So there's, if one company is bigger than the other one, and it was a fact of life, it doesn't mean that the practices and processes and all the things that Mtel was doing were better than what was Blizu doing before. So Blizu was a smaller one, but really a good and successful company. Next one, we said, let's apply the best ones. And this is why our principle, and you will see afterwards, was really best of both. Let's consider Mtel, let's consider Blizu, and let's see what is the best of both of uh, our practices. And of course, um, very clearly, from the very beginning, we said we have to be very transparent and open in communication. Because this is one of the biggest hiccups in merging companies, and this is the culture point, how we communicate, what we communicate, how often we communicate, and whether we communicate the right thing at the right moment, even if it's not always good news, and you know that. These were the project streams, and this is just a slide, I'm definitely not going to talk about all of that, so don't worry, I know the timing. So HR goes together with communication, guess why? Because it's about people, both of it. What were the HR goals? We didn't have a goal to cut half of Blizzle people and just, you know, live with what we are and just, uh, you know, promote our full telco services and, our, and being number one in internet providing and being number two in TV services. Definitely not. Our first and foremost goal was to fully integrate the whole team of Blizzle. And I'm talking here more than 1,000 people. Our second one was to keep the key people. And excuse me if I'm not really politically correct, but when I refer to key people, I do not refer to people as, you know, bodies, but I refer to key knowledge. So it's very important, and I will come back afterwards to that point, so please remember it. 
and then build one team. And that's the most important part because it was very, very difficult to have two companies, two cultures, big one, small one, Bulgarian one, international one, and really have one team. Even like logistics one. What was the project plan? This is how we started, and we were very proud with this. And I have a colleague, and she's smiling, by the way. This is really the way we started. This is our project schedule. It's so nice. You can't even read it. Same for me. So it was very diligently filled in with the minutes of meeting, with the daily reports, the weekly reports, the updates, and everything that we had to provide to our colleagues from the other party, to our management body. So, of course, as every merger, uh, we started with the HR audit. So we went through, you know, all the data, employees, products, HR uh, programs, whatever processes, everything. It was really like a long list of things, and you see it in the background. We analyzed everything. We started, of course, by the book, making sure that there is an uh, excellent job screening and the job matching, because that was important when merging the two teams. So we make sure that everybody is on the right position. And that was our key priority. But time was flying. And our CEO was telling us from day one, make sure it's fast. Why? And I fully, fully subscribe to this. And here is the culture moment. If we, we really prolong very much this process of merging the companies, of building the one team, and I've lived through that because there was another merger back in 2010, and this was not really a good example. If we really prolong that period, people start to be hesitant about whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, what will happen to me, will I keep my job, will I keep my boss, what will happen to me in the next couple of weeks, months, year, am I considered the key people in the new company, being a key pe uh, person in the, um, in the old one, all kinds of questions. The longer the period, the longer the list of questions. And I can assure you, not all the questions have answers, and we didn't. And that was the point when we realized one month later that it's much better to be fast but productive. It was much more important to try than just plan trying. It was much more important to act quickly on the spot right now rather than just being reacting to questions, to actions, to challenges. And of course, finally, and this is the self-critical moment, and first it starts with me and then with my team. We always, HR people, tend to want to be perfect and flawless. And no, we do not tolerate mistakes. And that's a fact. Because we do the payroll, we, ha we have no right to have mistakes in the cash. And, you know, we always have these excuses. But you know what? We realized at that point of time that being flawless was not helping us. It was just eating out of our time, and it was clear that we will not meet our deadlines. So one month later, we said, we have to change something. We have to change our approach. We have to change the way we do things. We have to change the way we think about doing things. So we became a little bit more agile. I know you know this word. It's already a buzzword in the HR. So what we achieved, changing the approach, some numbers. We had this very simple plan. We just have the one year period and we said, let's start first with the easy part. Let's first integrate the um, administration stuff. It was a small group of people. It was clear what is accounting, what is accountant doing. It was clear what HR people are doing. So these were the first people that we put on board, even physically, because we transferred them to the premises of MTEL. It was from basically a different location. So that was the easy part. So we started with that one just to get a little bit more, you know, um, the knack of it. And it was the first three months. Then we did really a big thing, the technical stuff. 
And I can tell you this was the most important one. Why? Not because it's more than 500 people, but because we actually bought Blizzo because of their technical expertise, because of the fixed expertise, which we didn't have. So it was critical that we are definitely not demotivating all those installers, going to the homes of our customers, and really keeping their smiles and putting in all those things on the shoes just to make sure that they're not, uh, um, they're not um, um, challenging the, um, you know, the list of things that they have to do. Um, call center, that was easy. And last, that was the salespeople. You know, salespeople, you have to be careful about that. Because salespeople, you know, they have different understanding of life. They are selling different things. So the most difficult part with sales was because we had to integrate shops and we had to integrate um, direct salespeople, the key account people. And this is a di different channels of, um, of sales. In shops, we had different systems. Blizu and MTEL, different billing systems, so that was really a challenge. We're still working on that, to be very honest. In the key account group, it was easier because it was an easy mixture of people, so they just started sharing knowledge and how they sell the fixed product portfolio and the mobile product portfolio. So that was the, that was the plan, not to go into too much details because of the timing. A little bit more on that. What we did, um, and we put a very big focus on that. We personally, the HR people, personally extended the offers to more than 1,000 people uh, from Blizu. There was always an HR people or an HR trained person to explain what it is that they get when they join MTEL. There was this, um, this template that we had what you have now is an uh, employee of Blizu and what, you, ha what you will have as an employee of MTEL. There was a clear comparison of cash, of benefits, of everything. And this was very important that people have a clear picture and it is about communication. Because people do feel secure when they know what is ahead. So this was number one. Then, of course, I have to add that although we were always trying and we, we managed to be really cost effective in all the HR exercises, we managed also to keep internal equity in terms of compensation because there are clearly uh, areas of uh, the business in uh, Blizu where people were underpaid compared to uh, doing the same job in MTEL. So we had to match this and to make sure that people doing the same job being one team, being one company, are really equally, equally treated. Um, oops. And then last but not least, I'm really proud when I was preparing this presentation and I did some KPI calculation. And I'm really proud that the one year turnover of uh, people from Blizu is just 5%. So they like what they found. They were not mistreated, they were not lied, they were really treated the right way. For the key people, and if you remember, I told you to remember something about their, the turnover because this is not something I'm really proud of, this number 24%, but I have an explanation about it like all HRs have. Um, it's really actually not more than, uh, than a dozen of people in terms of absolute value just to get the idea, but still what I'm talking about is uh, for sure in terms of uh, merging companies and teams, you do have double functions. You do have overlaps. You can't get away from that. And we have to be honest and face it um, the way it is. So, of course, there were uh, some functions like this. We couldn't keep on having two IT directors. We couldn't, we couldn't keep on having two chief accountants. So, uh, with the point of time, what we did, knowledge was transferred to the right people, so the right people stayed. The others just decided to, to look for a new job outside. And there's no pain about that. Because it was not about the bodies of the key people, it was about the knowledge, if you remember. So knowledge was transferred and that was key for us and we succeeded in that. And then, of course, a lot of people were promoted. Others kept their managerial positions. So this was really, again, just not acquiring, not eating the, the small fish, but rather um, rather actually um, merging companies together. Um, and last, 
maybe. It's uh, a little bit crowded, so I'm not going to go into um, all the details. But just to tell you that, uh, of course, culture is not a project. It's a journey. And it started last year in October 2015, and we're still in this journey. And we're not going to stop. Not just at the moment when we realize that we are really one team, but because culture is something that you really need to, um, you know, to feed, like you feed your baby. This is how it grows. This is how it becomes better. It becomes more, uh, more knowledgeable about things. So what we did, we had this uh, engagement program because we tend to use, uh, you know, HR people tend to use programs and processes and projects, so it's still a program. But what we, uh, what we finally agreed is that one team is not the MTEL team. It's uh, one plus one is more than two, and it's stronger together. So we believe in that. We believe that we're stronger together. We believe that together we can make things better. We can keep our leading position on the market because that's really important and this is part of our growth strategy. And we started with the get to know campaigns, then we went through uh, get settled, uh, which is the normal next step. So we had this uh, process interactions, we, uh, we streamlined a lot, of, um, a lot of practices, as I told you, it was the best of both approach. Um, now we are using our um, internal internet uh, space where we are sharing a lot of information. We have a lot of joint uh, trainings and um, and we are also discussing employees' proposal how to, how to get better and better. And last but not least, we had our sports event already, and it was really a success, our uh, Olympic Games, uh, the MTEL Olympic Games. And now we are waiting for our Christmas party. And uh, again, there we will certainly make sure that we are one team and we are successful being one. And to go back to the beginning, it's like a fast forward. Um, what actually I decided to tell you being here at, uh, on that stage is that changing cultures in our companies means that it first has to start with us, with the HR people who are leading the change. We should not, you know, leading mean, does not necessarily mean being one step ahead of everybody. Leading, in our case, in HR case, should mean that we are together with all of our uh, people in the company. And it also means that fast is better than perfect. And believe me, it works. And this is a very personal example that I shared with you, and I believe in it. And now it's time that I have the popcorns. Thank you for the attention. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Miglena Uzonova. Fantastic.